everybody. My name is Josh Tyler. I'm the National College Advisory Program Director for Rush Soccer. And we are going to be chatting with two amazing people today. Dave Mazar from St. John's University, the Division I men's coach. And then we'll be joined right after that with Bob Riasso, who's the head men's coach at Rush Combine Academy. We are talking about the Division I dead period extended to April 15th. And what does that mean for you? Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Magoosh. You need to sign up for ACT SAT prep. Rush players get an exclusive price of only $50. Sign up at rushcollege.com. And we're going to dive right into it. This is Cap Chat. <laughs> We're going to be chatting with Dave Massar from St. John's University Division I men's soccer coach. He actually used to play for Bob Riasso, so he is a legend uh, in himself. We really appreciate it. And we're going to be talking about the Division I extending the dead period to April 15th. And we're going to chat about what that means, what the Division I dead period is, and what you can do um, to still continue to stand out. So we're going to dive in. Dave uh, man, thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? Thanks, Josh. Great to be here. How are, how are things up north for you? They're, they're very good. We just finished our team at St. John's, trained all fall. We didn't have a season, but it was nice to get a little development training in. We trained five, six days a week, and we're pretty cognizant of uh, our university did a great job of staying on top of uh, the COVID uh, situation and kept our kids healthy, and none of our kids actually had uh, contacted COVID, so we'll knock on wood for that, and we had a great fall. Let's dive right into the what NCAA Division One. They've extended the dead period. Can you talk a little bit about that and what's that looking like? So I think they've extended the dead period all the way to April 15th, which seems a bit excessive, but I think with all the concerns with the vaccine just coming up and, you know, Division One coaching in all sports can get a little hectic between flying and chasing to different events and sometimes international recruiting. They really don't want to take that risk of infecting the coaches and having people set up tournaments and additionally potentially bring COVID back to the campuses. As all the campuses, every university is just carefully trying to, you know, keep the university doors open, give kids that you know, hands-on educational opportunity that they 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 want and deserve, and so to do that, uh, I think they're being you know very cautious about letting the coaches get out and recruit. So Division One coaches are, are put off till April fifteenth. And in in a dead period, there there is so you're not able to watch any any live soccer. No. So the the biggest thing kids can do is let us know when games are being streamed or they're being videotaped in a different way. And, you know, that, that's a lot of games for coaches to go watch. So, like, a way to condense your game would be great, you know, if that's a question of, like, how can someone present themselves. If you have a, you know, a 90-minute game or an 80-minute game, can you condense it into, you know, 10 minutes of your best plays and or your plays that impact and show the level of the game so that you can maybe send that off to a coach. Okay. Um, so it's a lot of video right now. And a little bit of just, you know, contacting, uh, you know, the different areas where, where kids go. I think, you know, the other part of this is that the NCAA has given every kid an extra year of eligibility. So nobody loses a year of eligibility. Let, let, so let's talk about let's talk about that. I want to get back to some other things. So the, the eligibility process is, is players typically have four years uh, of playing, and they have to complete that within five years – of graduating high school and i think player you can you can relate that more you see on on you know, on big time football because that's on televised they see a red-shirted freshman you know yep. and so but so now when you say they've added a year of eligibility could you explain that a little a little more of what what that means that means that this year starting in uh for 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 soccer players this year starting in uh, fall to the to the spring it will not count for any any anybody who plays so when you play a game or you play in the spring or even with the acc who played a little bit this fall those kids get an extra year of eligibility because they're not looking at as a traditional season so they're kind of giving those kids an extra year so it's going to complicate roster spaces roster times 
Um, and just, you know, there's just going to be kind of a, a jam at a lot of the universities. So meaning, that. meaning kids, players, um, are, are not going to be leaving school because they can stay an extra year and possibly even get grad school paid for or the first year grad school paid for. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. That's and that's exactly what is out there in, in a lot and kids could then graduate and transfer somewhere else. So it opens up a whole different recruiting marketplace which existed a little bit, but it's going to exist in a, in a whole different level. Interesting. So did they, did they loosen up their, their transfer requirements as well for NCAA? I mean, the transfer requirements have always been fairly loose. You know, they always get a waiver. And I think, uh, I think that generally is, is, is okay if it's at a conference and different areas, but it's, 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 that's been more along the lines of men's and women's basketball, football. Okay. And, so if you're if you're we're going to talk about this senior specifically in part two when we when we join with Bob from from Combine Academy and then but so if we're looking at a freshman, sophomore, juniors right now that have aspirations of playing Division One and and as so you can't watch them play live you can't really you can't have off campus communication with them what what's what should they be doing right now you mentioned game film but what else should they be doing if that's their aspirations to play Division One soccer. Just trying to connect via the email and, uh, you know, getting themselves out to the different schools they'd like to attend, you know, get out a short resume, uh, get out some of the contacts, some of the references that they might have so the coaches can follow up on them that way, right? Because references are, you know, is a, is a big deal because as you go through it, you'll get to know different people and coaches have a different networkings that they go to and trust. Um, and I think that's really it for now. You know, it's, it's, and being patient. Dave, how many emails are you getting in a typical week? I mean, it's just, it's, it's astronomical the amount of emails we get. We're getting, you know, probably, I don't know, 30 to 40 a day. That's a day. So, you know, time say, just say six or seven days, it's hmm. two to 300 emails that you're going through about, you know, different kids, whether they're sophomores or juniors or seniors currently, or we'll get kids from junior college. You'll get kids that want to transfer or you'll get kids from overseas. And it's just, it is really hard to keep track of. And a lot of coaches will do their camps, you know, have like a clinic on campus and do a three day camp. And that's a way to get to know the, the, a program and a team and but that's stopped as well so that's not happened either and it won't happen until after April 15th so it's really challenging for for younger players to kind of get their foot in the door and that really creates an opportunity for for the combine academy to get college mm -hmm. level coaching at younger ages and kind of get a feel of where you are and see where you where you might be able to go um as you progress through